Hey everybody, this is Larry with Leading Edge Industrial again, and uh, we're going to go over our revolved part and how, how to create a fully divined um, revolve. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to hit L for line, and we'll hit our uh, XY plane as well as turn on our origin so that we can snap our, our corner piece to that. We're going to bring that down about 1.3 inches and over, oh, say one inch long. It gets us close to what our dimensions are here, up about 5 0.55 over 3 eighths of an inch. Sometimes this little um, check mark gets in the way, and that's to tell you that you're done with creating that line. I wish they would get rid of that because it's not necessary. That's what the escape key's for. Um, one of the things that I preach all the time is using, um, we'll make that 3 eighths of an inch, using one hand on the mouse, one hand on the keyboard. It makes you much faster to do that. So, you know, why they need to have that is beyond me, but let's see if maybe we can't get that. Um, changed in the future maybe uh, hit a design request or something so now that we've got this this sketch drawn out this part's going to be based off of one of our produ production pulleys for our uh, our spindle speeder and it's a three-stage spindle speeder so right now it doesn't look like much but we'll go ahead and define that out um, the first thing that you'll notice is not everything is parallel and perpendicular there's one line here at the top that is definitely at an angle is not a, a vertical or horizontal constraint but we need that to be there so let's go ahead and add that constraint by coming over to our constraints menu, selecting horizontal and vertical, and select that top line. Now what we also want to do is let's go ahead and, uh, I don't know that we necessarily have to do that because I think that that's, yeah, it's still perpendicular because the other constraints are here are perpendicular. So the first thing that we want to do is in order to uh, lock this down, as you can see, I can move all the geometry around. That's not a good thing if we want to make a part that, you know, that we're running in production so we want to make sure everything's locked down let's go ahead and do d for dimension and we'll just start dimensioning this out based on the drawing uh, every once in a while i've noticed that that dimension tool will just snag a line or something that i had uh before touched before so let's um sometimes you just have to um, hit it a couple of times and of course you could always just start dimensioning with that but i didn't want to so uh this dimension is 1.312 inches this one here is uh, 0.99 inches. The top dimension is 1.5 inches. From this wall to here is 1.375 inches. And then we're going to dimension this part here as 0.375. Now, there's still one point here that isn't constrained. As you can see, everything else is a black line. That means, it means it's constrained. I mean, I can't drag it in and out, but I can drag this line up and down. And the reason why is I'm not going to add another dimension here. Um, I know that these lines are supposed to be the same size because we're using a form tool to form the V on here. So in order to do that, I just want to apply an equal constraint. So I'm going to select both of those lines and then go to our constraints menu and hit equal. Now both of those lines are the same. As you can see, everything's locked down. We have one more line to add, and that's going to be for the shaft for our, um, our spindle shaft. And we'll define that as hit dimension key, or the D key, and dimension that 0.102. And now we're done with our revolve here. So um, there are two ways to go about creating the geometry that I'm about to create. One is to continue creating geometry on this sketch here, but then it becomes a little messier and a little hard to see. So I'm going to create two separate sketches, um, and I'll show you why as we get going. You'll see some of this stuff gets a little bit confusing. So rather than confuse, I'd rather just go ahead and uh, um, do that part later. So let's go ahead and do a revolve. Select on the geometry we want revolved, which is just this right, right hand side over here, and then the axis we want it to go around, and select there. Now we've got our pulley. We've got the basic shape of our pulley. Now we're going to come in and we're going to add the V shape. The first thing that we have to do is we have to hide this body, because we're not going to need that. And then we're going to need to turn on that sketch, because we'll need to use some of the sketch lines here as uh, creating our, our next level sketch lines. So let's go ahead and hit L for line and select our, uh, our same plane that we were working on, and let's go ahead and zoom in. Um, we're creating a V-belt pulley here, so what we want to do is sketch in three V profiles, since this is a three-stage gear. So I'm going to go ahead and sketch those out here real quick, and then we'll come back in and we'll add in our constraints and dimension it.
Okay, so now we've got our, our V shapes drawn in. I did this a couple of different ways on here. Um, the top two are different than the bottom one, so then I could create that, and I want to show you why, because I want to be able to move this around here, and we'll snap it to that line later. Um, but for now, it may make creating the geometry a little bit easier. So we're going to go ahead, and we're going to start off with the top profile here. And uh, let's go ahead and, and fully dimension this top profile out. The first thing that we want to do is, before we do that, is select these metal lines here, and let's turn those into construction geometry by selecting them and hitting X. That turns that into a dotted line, which is we now know is definitely construction geometry. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to add in a perpendicular constraint. And we'll do this for all of these lines here. Okay, and I'll go back up to the top. All right, so from here, we're going to go ahead and hit D key for dimension. And we know this back line here is going to be 0.188. We know that this dimension here is going to be 30 degrees, I'm sorry, 30 degrees. And we want to have this line here be snapped to a midpoint, so we're going to create a midpoint constraint. So let's go down over here, we're going to click midpoint, we're going to select the end of this line and the short line here. There we go. Now everything's going to be symmetric based off of that. Then the last dimension we're going to add is right here, this needs to be point. One, five, six. There we go. Now, uh, it's still blue because we haven't defined the location on this surface where we want to have it. Well, I want it dead in the middle. So what we're going to do is go down and create another midpoint constraint. We're going to grab this endpoint here, and we're going to grab this line. And now everything's well defined. And as you can see, this part here is locked down. Well, the same, these three triangles, or these triangular shapes, are all going to be the same size. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply some equal constraints to them. And then that way it saves us some time as well as now all we have to do is go in and change one instead of changing all three. Um, whenever we make a design change, we can just go in and make one change. So the very first thing is let's go ahead and snap these, uh, these middle lines to be the same length. And what we'll do is we'll select all three of them at a time and hit equal. Now those are all the same. Let's do the same thing for the backbone here. And hit equal. Now those are all the same. And then also for this line here. Oh, not that long line. We want the shorter of the long. We're going to go over orphan geometry. This is kind of create, you could create orphan geometry by having short lines on top of other. Um, but uh, we'll talk about that in the next sketch because there's a couple of examples of that. We want all those to be equal. So now those are equal. And then this applied a, uh, a perpendicular constraint. We don't want that there. Sometimes the CAD system will apply that because it doesn't know exactly what you're trying to do. And, uh, you know, um, we don't necessarily need that to happen. So let's go ahead and we're going to do a, a midpoint constraint on this line here. And it doesn't look like, why isn't that look like that's a midpoint to midpoint? Looks like it's probably not. Let's do uh, another midpoint constraint here with this line here. And then we'll do another midpoint constraint with the end of that line to the middle of this line. There we go. It didn't constrain it. Okay. So let's go ahead and head. sometimes it takes, I may not have selected the right point there. Hmm. It's still not wanting to cooperate. Try it one more time. Let's do this. Can I do there? Select that dot, do a midpoint constraint, and then select this line. There we go. Sometimes you just have to mess around with the geometry a little bit to get it there. All right, so what you see is we've locked everything down. We didn't have to apply any dimensions on this part here, but it's still the same as here. So now if I change this to, say, uh, 35 degrees, that'll change for all three of those. It'll, it'll lock in all three of those. Now on this one here, on this last one, we want to come down here, and we're going to make this line and this line here a uh, uh, collinear line. So then that way they're, they're touching. Okay, so um, this is an issue that we can have in uh, CAD systems. It's been, it, 
I've been doing CAD for 20 years, and uh, this has always been an issue is the longer you keep doing CAD work and simply like that every once in a while you have to shut down the CAD and restart it because uh, if you're trying to do something such as we're trying to create a collinear relationship between this edge here and this line and it won't let you select them uh, many many of these CAD programs have a database in the back that they keep track of everything that you're doing and uh, sometimes that that database can just become so full that it becomes uh, and not necessarily corrupted but it, it won't do the things that are simple, you know, like what we were trying to do. Um, so just save your sketch, close down your program, open it up and reopen the program, which is exactly what I hear I did here. I was able to select this line and this line here and make a collinear relationship and it snapped right to it. So um, with that being said, let's go ahead in our dimension tool. Before we do that, we need to see how far we are away from this edge here so we know to dimension this. Um, inspect I for inspect select this corner and this corner and it looks like we're 44 thousandths out so let's go ahead and uh, and change that oh actually because we're uh, uh, let's do and close that and let's hit our dimension here and change it back to 30 degrees so now if we change it back to 30 degrees that should change here if we do inspect from this point to this point it should be right at 40 thousandths uh, 52 thousandths And now all of our features are well defined. So we can go ahead and uh, we'll hit our stop sketch. And we're going to turn our body back on, unhide the body. And we're going to want to do a revolve. And we're going to go back and we're going to select each one of those divots or those V slots that we wanted to, to do. We'll select the axis as being on that original sketch there. And now when you do a revolve on a revolve, the second one is a cutout. So we say OK. And now there's our pulley. But everything's fully defined. <clears throat> so it took us a while to get this one going here. However, you'll see on the next uh, video number three why we did this, why we spent so much time going through that. So uh, please leave questions, comments below. Uh, click like and subscribe if you like our videos and want to see more of them. And uh, I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thanks. Bye.